got him. Hey everybody, had a pretty good uh, match in the Yag Tiger the other day. That guy back there, Ace Tanker, he had uh, what I call the Curse of Finland, which is when you have winter camo on your tank for Finland and you forget to change it. Happens to me, oh, every fourth or fifth time I get Finland. So I'll uh, fast forward until we get to the action. I was playing with Old Guard. And uh, naturally, teammates machine gun you at the start because even though they don't get points for it anymore and if you J out, they get a team kill, they still think it's a good idea. So originally it was heading towards A. I couldn't, of course, during the match, see those player tanks over there that you can see in the replay. But we had a lot of contact going on up at uh, the top of the ridge, so up to the top of the ridge. So at this point, Old Guard was calling out targets because he was taking hits. I didn't know about that T-34 to the right there, but I'll see you in a minute. There's the first one. He saw the T-34 at this point off to the right and told me about it, so swung it over to engage. I didn't see the T-44 back there behind him at first either. Unfortunately, that shot went completely over him. I slightly overestimated the range. Somehow he didn't see me, although I don't know how. Or he just decided he couldn't damage me from the front, which might have been the case too. That one, sadly, I underestimated the range. But I did finally narrow it down after that. Or not. Kill assist. But that's alright. So at some point, this replay will cut in with the live replay of uh, Kyle and I getting the audio, unless the audio quality is bad on it. I haven't listened to it yet, so here's kill number three. Oh, kill number two, actually. Sorry. That was an easy one. IS-1 against the Ag Tiger, pretty much no contest, and he gave me a side shot, so all the sweeter. Here's the next one. Now Kyle was telling me he was right on the other side of the hill, so I thought he meant literally like 20 feet in front of me on the other side of this hill, but he's talking about that T-44 right up there to the left. So I came up over this hill expecting extremely close contact. I could see that guy, but I thought there was another one that he could see through like a third person view or something, like right over this hill. But then when we realized we were both talking about the same guy, I was no longer worried. Now we could see AAA coming from down in the trees, but we didn't know where it was coming from. It was that gas in the background, but it looked like it was coming from where I'm aiming. So I was searching for it because we knew there was AAA coming from down there. I also knew it was AAA, so I wasn't really worried about it. Now, Kyle had seen that T-44 and told me, old guard, but it had backed off before I could locate it. There we go. You can hear the gas firing again. The gas is firing at the Panther off to my right, down the hill. 
So we still thought it was, we could hear it, but we couldn't see it, so we still thought it was down in those trees somewhere. Speed up a little bit here. We did spot the Su-152 up there in a minute after we were trying to locate this guy. Now here he's shooting up in the sky, and we can see where the tracers were coming from finally, so I'm moving to try to get into a position to engage him. And I underestimated the shot slightly, overestimated it, that is. Took a hit there from, I think, the T-44, because if that Su-152 had hit me, it probably would have finished me off. So I'm repairing quick here, because the gun barrel was damaged. I changed my mind. I'm not going to use the uh, in-game audio. Oh, I didn't know. Oh. Well, that's kind of annoying. I promise I did actually uh, aim normally. I'm not sure what's going on there. Yeah, I had AG rounds loaded to try and hit that uh, gas down there. So that explains why I hit the 152 and didn't do any serious damage to him. I didn't notice that during the game. I knew there were several enemies up there on the ridge, so I wasn't paying so much attention to what shell I was firing. Now we knew this guy was coming in close. Which is a little scary since it was a 44 For whatever reason, he didn't push his speed advantage to get right in close to me. Which was lucky for me. Also lucky for me with the fact that I could turn with a broken track. And the fact that the Tiger II behind me came in and took him out. You'll also see the Tiger II do me a huge favor coming up. Huge favor. This video wouldn't be without this other Tiger II coming up. So I'm taking hit after hit after hit here. We wasn't we we wasn't we weren't sure what it was coming from. We couldn't tell it was an M19, though we did figure out it was probably an M19 by the sound and the volume of the shots and the fact that it wasn't really doing any damage. Now if you watch AHFL here, I owe him huge. He actually drove in between. He drove in between and took the fire off me. I actually hit that M19 there. A shot right through the top of his turret, which knocked out at least one of his crew. It was in the other video, but I'm not going to use the other video because I, I don't really like the audio from it. And you can see the M19 cleared all the armor skirts off the side of my Yag Tiger here. Now here's where things get really interesting. I get out, end up fighting about four AAA vehicles over here and their speed keeps me from being able to hit them and my armor keeps them from being able to do too much damage to me. And somehow that SB2 that just went flying by never spotted me and bombed me out, though he does take out uh, the Panther or the Tiger 2 behind us. We'll speed up to the goofiness with the AAA here. Yeah, there he is. that year two right here, I thought he was going to turn right in front of me and I was going to be able to shoot him out of the sky. But unfortunately, he turned above me, or behind me. He turned a really tight turn and he never came in front of my gun. Because he was really low, and he was banking, and he was very slow, and he probably would have been pretty easy to hit. I can't guarantee I would have hit him. But I think I would have. Once Tempest comes in and takes out the year two, bless his heart. That was a big help to me, too, obviously. Year 2 against the Ag Tiger. Year 2 is going to win most of the time. Now here's another hit on this AAA crew. Right through two of, his, two of his guys. So at this point, according to the game, I've knocked out three of his crew. 
in the M19. I don't know exactly how the game was calculating, but I never did. I never actually killed him until he jays out a little later. So I must have done enough damage to his gun or his breach or something, because at some point he stopped shooting at me. He's just parked next to me because of the way keeping me from turning to get to him. So that was that Su-152 back there. Just knocked my track out. He just barely missed me. I've never seen the anti-mech order pop up like that in the replay. And a huge help again from AHFL. Big thanks. He's getting a credit in the end credits for sure. I was on my way at this point once I was repaired. I was heading up to finally find and finish off that M19. Wasn't sure where he was. And at this point, Old Guard notices the T-34 up above me on the ridge, which I didn't see because I was concentrating on just driving. So, big help again there. Just shooting range. Shooting gallery targets. Alright, then we'll head back to that M19. Because watching a Yag Tiger with damaged tracks try to drive up a hill is a torture no one should have to endure in regular speed. That P-47 was pretty scary too. I thought any second he was turning around and coming back and taking me out. Now because of the damaged tracks and I was moving uphill and the M19 just being faster, there's no chance I was ever going to get my gun turned around on him without help. So, asking for help here but there's nobody, nobody within distance, unfortunately. So this was a battle I just had to endure of knowing I'm never going to get my gun turned around on this guy and he's not going to be... At this point I decided, the heck with it, I'm just going to drive away from him. And then I decided to try to back into him and ram him. The P-47 hits me with rockets and knocks the track out, barely missing me. So now I'm just trying to turn to get the gun on him, which was frustrating, of course, but not great and unexpected. That T-34 being right where I could shoot him was unexpected. So that was lucky for me. Now for some reason here, I don't know if he was out of ammo or what. He's still got crew showing in the replay, of course. There's the P-47 crashing. So that's the end of the P-47 threat. The M19 just sits over here where I can't get my gun on him and he's not shooting me. So either he decided he couldn't do any damage to me. Alright, he did shoot. I remembered him not shooting anymore, but I guess I remembered incorrectly. So I decided, well, might as well fix the track and then just ignore this guy because he can't damage me, really. Besides maybe breaking my tracks. And I can't ever get the gun around on him from this close. So at this point, I'm just going to try to back past him, which isn't going to work, of course, because even in reverse, he's faster than I am, which makes sense. It's a lot lighter vehicle. <laughs> so I don't know if he's trolling me here by not shooting and just messing with me that I can't get in front of him. I really thought I was going to bring the gun to bear here, but the tracks were just too damaged, and I was backing up a hill, and it just wasn't going to happen. So at some point here, I just decided, the heck with it, forget this guy, he can't hurt me, I'm going to head off towards either their spawn or come in from behind A. I think it's here where I decided, the heck with it, I'm going to get some speed going up. Oh, I know what I was doing here, I'm trying to get speed going up downhill to try and pull a 180 and bring the gun about on him, which it wasn't going to work, but it was the only thing left to try. Suddenly this gas comes up and starts hitting me. I got a critical hit through the front of his engine, knocked his radiator out and breaded out his engine, so I decided, enough with this, ramming speed. <laughs> and right about here, yep, 
gave me a kill on him. Now here, the ZSU-37 manages to apparently break my track for the third or fourth time, which is what kills the tank. Like, it didn't actually... didn't actually kill the crew. Just reds out the track again. For apparently, you can see I've still got five good crew members out of the six. So apparently the track being broken for like the fourth time was enough to... knock me out. But I've had more than enough points to get my Arado. Of course. And I knew right where they were. Even though they don't render in until the last possible second, I at least knew where they were and had a good frame of reference on the map to see them. I'm not exactly sure how the M36 survived me bombing there. That bomb was... I mean, a 500 kilo bomb should have been close enough on a light tank destroyer like that, but I'll take the kill on the ZSU-37 there. Revenge kill. There's AHFL again. He was holding his bombs until they bombed A, which was a pretty good tactic to keep us going. I can't fault it. It's really hard to spot targets on the ground since you can't lock onto them anymore. So that was a pretty good, pretty good move on his part, I think. As it is, we ended up losing, but that's not because he wasn't bombing. And God bless the Arado's extremely strong landing gear. Because that was about a carrier landing. But it worked. I thought I was going to break the gear coming up here trying to get this thing stopped, but it actually didn't shatter for once. Right about here I thought, well, I'm gonna break the gear, but I'm going slow enough that it's not gonna it's not gonna wreck the plane. I should be able to repair. And it actually stayed whole and even ended up <laughs> facing the right direction on the runway. So once we rearm, speed up a little here. Speed us back to the battle. Now we've got two Ferdinands left here, and neither one of them moved for the rest of the match. They're both just holding our base, apparently. I guess they expected to get spawn rushed or something. But they never did come out of those positions. One of them gets killed, but it's a Ferdinand, I understand, to a certain extent. But it's a little frustrating, because we had two Arados flying overhead on the battlefield, telling them hey, tell us where they are so we can bomb them, or move forward and let us know and we'll cover you, and they never, never moved. I don't know if they spoke English or not, they probably didn't. There's the final kill for the match right there. Now I'm looking for the other ZSU or M19, whatever it was here. I never did find him, and the guy that I just bombed, Voidikins, comes back, I'm pretty sure it was him, comes back in an M19 or... Well, I guess it would be a ZSU-37, he was Russian. And actually gets a super long distance... Yep, ZSU-37, there it is. He gets a super long distance hit on me here. Which blacks out my right wing. And as you can see, he took the wing tip off. And I thought I was going to crash, but I was actually able to hold enough right aileron, or left aileron and left rudder somehow to keep this thing airborne until the end of the match. And that's all the rest that happened, so we'll just speed it up here. I was trying to make it back to base to actually see if I could land it with part of a wing, but the way that the turn ability of it was so diminished that it was next to impossible and time just ran out on us. The match actually went the full 30 minutes and ended, and we lost because we were down tickets, which I don't know why tank matches have to be shorter than airplane matches. When stuff like this happens, it's so much more satisfying to see the game come to an actual conclusion, not just ending because we ran out of time. But, it's the way the game is right now.